Good morning. Hope everybody's doing all right today. Just touching base. Um, we've got a couple of, a little follow-up from yesterday. Number one, uh, we uh, I think we figured out the, uh, the issue with the links on the NTI page. My preference is still for you all to go on Google Classroom and um, uh, access the documents that way to our assignments. However, if you are on the NTI page, I, after this week, I won't be posting any more links. I fixed the ones that are on there for this week so that you all can uh, can access the doc, uh, our, our assignments. Um, but go ahead and check on those again. If you had any issues yesterday, go ahead and try again. I think you'll be okay this time. Um, so there's that. Um, we're having a lot of people turning in work. I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I mean, it's not 100%, uh, but I think what's fair to ask, has it ever been 100%? No, uh, but we're at a good percentage right now, and I think it's only going to keep getting better. So I'm, I'm optimistic about that. So, all right. So today we, uh, this week we've been covering the Great Depression. Uh, Monday was the causes of the Great Depression. Then yesterday we spent some a little bit of time comparing the Great Depression to uh, the situation we're facing today. And uh, here on Wednesday, April twenty second. We're talking about the New Deal. Ah, how do we get out of the Great Depression? All right, and President Roosevelt, um, after uh, beating Herbert Herbert Hoover in a landslide in 1932, in the 1932 election, uh, President Roosevelt introduces his idea of the New Deal. Um, so, um, keep in mind, Hoover's response to the Depression was a big reason why he was voted out of office in 1932. Um, would history be repeating itself this fall? I don't know. I don't know if President Trump's reaction was was that bad to where it would cause him to lose uh, the presidency. Um, again, when things like this happen, you can't expect a perfect response. Um, it's you know you can always be prepared, uh, but you can't expect a perfect response. Um, so because um, it's never happened before. When things that uh, happen to you that have never happened before, you're not going to react the right way. You're, you're always going to look back and say, man, I wish I'd reacted differently. And I'd say just about every president um, has faced that issue. So uh, taking a look at the chat room right now. Who's checking in this morning? Olive Loca. Great student. Love that kid. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about the New Deal. All right. Roosevelt gets uh, elected in 1932, takes office in 1933. And in his inauguration speech... He says that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Now, you can take that and you can apply it to any situation, any time period. You can apply it to what we're dealing with today. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So um, is it a bad thing that we're afraid of going to Kroger and getting sick? I mean, it could happen any other time, but uh, this is also a virus that we've never, uh, we've never dealt with before. There's no vaccine for it, so... I think what we've got to decide here is, are we justified in being afraid of getting sick here in 2020? So, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Um, I don't know if that applies to today or not. I'll let you guys decide. Number two, what does it mean when the president says we have nothing to fear but fear itself? Uh, how can you apply that quote to your high school career? That's all on you. I'm gonna, I don't have, I know when I think, look back to high school, um, how can you apply that quote to your high school career? Nothing to fear but fear itself. How do you apply that to your high school career? Maybe it's uh, making new friends, uh, getting a prom date, um, going ahead and applying for that job even though you don't think you're going to get it, trying out for a certain sports team even though you're not sure you can make it. Um, uh, don't be afraid to do those things. That's how I would apply it to high school. But no, I'll leave that up to you all. All right, the three R's of the new deal. Relief, recovery, and relief, recovery, and I'm going to let you all find that one. All right, list five programs that were created as part of the New Deal. Um, those are going to be, um, those are pretty easy to access on Google Images. Those are also in the PowerPoint in uh, Google Classroom that I've posted. So feel free to check that out. should be pretty easy pickings on that one. Um, how were farmers impacted by the New Deal? Well, farmers got hit the hardest by the by the Great Depression because they had, you know, farmers more so, maybe more so than anybody else, spend money to make money, right? And uh, they spend a lot of money to produce their crops. Well, if nobody's buying their crops, that means they've lost all that money, right? 
vegetables going bad, crops going bad. That's a, that's a bad situation. So um, there's that R word again, relief, uh, that President Roosevelt sends their way. Kind of like if your family's received a, a stimulus check from, uh, well, it was signed by President or President Trump's name's on it. So the check that came directly from President Trump, um, that stimulus check is um, uh, an example of relief in this situation. So, all right, why or why not should have uh, people have a social security check every month? You know, that's for when you're old and you're not drawing retirement. Should people be allowed to do that? Or do should we just expect people to work all the way until they die? Um, develop a way for the social security administration to make it tougher for people to take advantage of social security. All right, so do we, the question becomes, do we have people that are taking advantage of social security? Yes, I'm playing with my bald hair um, while I'm doing this lesson. Um... Are people taking advantage of Social Security? It's kind of like the welfare conversation. Are people taking advantage of that situation? How can we make it tougher? Should we make it tougher for people to gain access to these things? All right, which of the following options is responsible for the programs listed below? We've got Social Security Administration, Farm Assistance Program, and the Federal Works Program. All right, so what, uh, what is responsible for creating those programs? I think the answer should be pretty easy for you. All right, taking a look at a chart. I don't have a way of showing it to you right now. Um, if the population of the United States was 125 million in 1933, about how many people were unemployed? You're looking at the chart. It's basic math, guys. So maybe lump the, do this one in conjunction with some of your math homework, and I think why you've got a calculator out, and I think you'll be able to find the answer. Crap. All right, number 11, which of the following best explains the reason for the lowest point on the graph? I will tell you that the lowest point on the graph is 1944 on this chart. So keep that in mind. Uh, number 12, which of the following is the greatest contributing factor to the unemployment rate in the U.S., reaching 25% at the peak of the Great Depression? All right. Um, inflation of the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. Dollar wasn't worth as much anymore. No, now, I mean, and first of all, I think we didn't get a chance really to go over what inflation is. Maybe we did in Part A during Industrial Revolution, but let me remind you, if you hear your grandparents or your parents talk about how much a gallon of gas was uh, when they were growing up in the 1970s or 80s, right? Uh, if you're, maybe you hear your grandpa say, it cost me, it, it cost me a quarter to get a Coke in 1979, right? Uh, now, all of a sudden, that quarter isn't worth as much anymore, is it? Think about it. What can you really buy with a quarter? Uh, so that's inflation, where a, a quarter isn't worth as much as it used to be. A dollar isn't worth as much as it used to be. All right. The U.S. not joint. And by the way, look out for inflation here during this situation, this coronavirus crisis. I think that's something we're going to have to look out for. Um, heads up on that. The U.S. not joining the League of Nations. The U.S. did not join the League of Nations. Uh, that was... Uh, um, uh, that was, you know, Woodrow Wilson wanted that. President Wilson wanted that. Congress did not. Overproduction in factories causing layoffs. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, are all three of these uh, reasons for the Great Depression? Most likely, yeah. So, take the bait. Go with all the above. All right, number 13. Um, we got two more questions, three more questions left. Why do you think the game Monopoly was created in 1935? How could that game have helped Americans during the Great Depression? I mean, y'all ever played Monopoly? I played a six-hour game of Monopoly one time. Six hours, right? I know, it's crazy. So, um, how could that game have helped Americans during the Great Depression? Well, think about it, guys. I mean, are, mono are monopolies good for our economy? Again, a monopoly is when there's no competition, so... Pretend Walmart bought out all of its competitors, Target, Kroger, Save-A-Lot, Dollar General. Pretend Walmart bought out all of its competitors. That's a monopoly. All right, so what you got to ask yourself, is, monop is a monopoly good for our economy? Is a monopoly good for the consumer, the customer? Okay, is a monopoly good for the workers? I'm going to let you all uh, do the thinking on that. All right, why does the crime rate tend to be higher in lower income areas? That was a lot of crime uh, during the Great Depression. Fun fact, um, it was during the Great Depression that we see uh, comic book heroes like Superman and Batman come to uh, come to the forefront. In you know they were it was escapism. It was let's read this comic by about Superman because Superman's original purpose was to um, 
you know, he would catch people being bad with money during the Great Depression, and he'd, and he'd bring them to justice. That was the original premise of the, you know, first few Superman comics. Batman, you see uh, crime in a lot of lower-income areas during the Great Depression. Uh, where there's poverty, there's always going to be crime. If you don't learn anything else from me, you need to learn that. Where there's poverty, there is always crime, right? And uh, the Great Depression... Um, uh, the Great Depression did see a high... Well, you've heard about the gangsters, Al Capone and uh, Babyface Nelson, uh, bootleggers, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. You've heard about all, uh, heard about all those things. Um, those, people, those criminals, you know, uh, did a lot of their work in lower-income areas. Um, people become desperate in lower-income areas people, when they're poor, and we may see that a spike in crime here in, during the coronavirus crisis... We may see more, hopefully not more kids, but we're going to overall see more people getting desperate. People are going to get restless. And uh, don't be surprised if we have an increase in, in robberies and burglaries. I hope I'm not scaring anybody, but th these are just the things that happen when when money gets tight. All there's to it. And a lot of times when people commit these crimes, it's not to hurt anybody else. They're trying to survive. Unfortunately, here in America, we hopefully have other ways for those people to survive. That's the hope. All right, why would the mob have an increased presence during the Great Depression? Well, I kind of just answered that one. There's no law, you know, there's not a lot of money for law enforcement. Um, this is also during Prohibition when uh, liquor was banned in the United States. You couldn't go to the store and buy beer. You know, Dad couldn't run to the store and, and buy a bottle of something, or Mom couldn't buy a bottle, go to the store and buy a bottle of wine. It's um, during this time, uh, it, those things were illegal. It was called Prohibition, right? So the, all these gangsters, the mob, Al Capone, all those guys, um, they would uh, they would do a lot of their business underground. They would do literally in some cases. They were, they were very secret business. It was, um, you know, you've heard about speakeasies and everything, uh, a lot of code words and everything. If we had more time, if we were in the classroom, this is something I'd love to explore down the road. Um, how to get in and out of speakeasies? It'd be pretty cool. So, all right, that's all the questions uh, for, on today's assignment. Uh, yeah, 15. Now, tomorrow, I think it might be like 5, so be ready for that. So more work today than tomorrow. Um, if you have any issues accessing the documents, uh, have your parents email me, um, and uh, I'll see what I can get fixed. I think we've got it fixed, but I'm sure tomorrow or the next day there will be some other issue. So um, I'll be going down the list calling students from third period today. So be on the lookout for that. We'll have our video chats at 11 o'clock, 11.30, 12 o'clock, and 1 o'clock. All right, guys. Take it easy. Bye.